Hey, what's up everyone? I wanted to hop on here to a quick video about my KidCraft Appleton swing set here. I just got done putting it together and this video is going to save you a lot of time, a lot of planning, and a lot of potential aggravation. Having said that, this is a good swing set. I am happy with the quality of it, but there were a couple of things that I wish I knew before I planned set the day aside or what I thought I should have set the day aside to put this together. Uh, number one, it did take me six and a half hours to put this all together and that was with the help of a drill and an impact wrench to drive everything in there. If I was working with just hand tools, this is probably a two day plus job. Having said that, these are the tools that it required after I was, everything was all said and done. So what you're gonna do again, I, 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 don't, I can't require it, but I highly recommend that you actually have an impact driver here uh, because they do give you they do give you a bit for, it's a, it's a square head bit, other than, as known as a Robinson bit, a Robertson bit. So uh, to use a lot of these, a lot of these uh, screws are the square head. So they do give you the driver for that, but you should actually have a hex uh, driver on hand to drive everything in. If not, a drill will work fine, but you'll be fighting the torque. I have the drill because they do, there's a lot of lag screws and they want you to uh, use an eighth inch drill bit to uh, pre-drill all the screws so you don't split the wood. So eighth inch drill bit, drill, <coughs> impact driver, and then I also have on the impact, I have a fat Phillips head, or it's just a, a fairly large Phillips head, and then a kind of a fat Phillips head as well. Um, this is for some of the lag screws. They don't have the square heads on them. They've got the Phillips heads on them. They do not include a Phillips head bit. So grab that, and again, I, if you have something on an impact, it'll make it a lot easier to drive in. And then you're also going to need two sockets. There's a 7 16 and a half inch socket for some of the big hex bolts I'll show you in a second. You're going to need those, and again, impact makes your life infinitely easier and then to drive the stakes into the ground because this thing does uh, attach into the ground with ground stakes i have a three pound little mini sledge if you have a regular carpenter's hammer it's fine you'll just have to swing it more all right so going into the construction of this uh, it, it is it is all lumber there is no composite anywhere um, other than maybe the slide but the uh, everything here it, it smells i'm not going to say it's cedar but it has it does, certainly has a smell to it it's not just regular regular timber it's definitely treated of some sort although they do actually recommend that you stain it or treat it once a year so that it doesn't weather, it doesn't rot, it doesn't crack, but that's just because it's wood. Um, now, like I was saying before, it does actually, there's a lot of these big, uh, there's a lot of big hex bolts. This is where I needed the, um, needed that, the, the, the 7 16 or the half inch, the half inch is these really big ones up here and the 7 16 are slightly smaller. This is basically holding everything together. There's all these, uh, these little T bolts here on the back. They just kind of dig into the wood as the, as things tighten down. Obviously on the metal brace, they don't have that. They have regular lock nets, but everything is very, very well constructed. And I, can, I was able to do this as one person, although if you have two people available, it might make your life a little bit easier. Basically how the construction goes is you, uh, you construct this little L section here for the swings and you basically set that aside while you then build the fort. And at the end, the two halves just kind of meet right over they meet right over here. So this, this I was able to do by myself again, but if I had a second person helping me line up the holes because it is a little bit over my head, it would make life a little bit easier. I would also recommend a step ladder. I am six foot tall and this is still, I did have to get a ladder for the top. Uh, you actually have to screw those in down at the top to anchor the tarp in. But it's, uh, yeah, overall, good construction. I just kind of wish maybe if I had a second person for some of the steps, it would have made my life a little bit easier, but it can be done with one person if you're building this by yourself. Now the slide here is plastic and um, it actually, it attaches up top here with two big lag screws. So uh, if you do ever have to move this around for whatever reason, it's not too hard to detach the slide. Um, all you do again, it's, it's two screws that come out and the slide comes right off, but it is plastic. It's plenty, it does not flex when my daughter goes on it. So it is very strong, it's very rigid. Um, I, I pulled it out of the box, I saw a plastic sled and I was, or slide and I was like, is this gonna flex? No, it will not. So again, my, my daughter's probably 40-ish, 50 pounds and it doesn't flex as she goes down. She absolutely loves it. Um, over here, we've also got the rock wall, which again is, uh, it's very sturdy. It doesn't, I mean, it's just, this is all wooden screws and they got the little plastic uh, hand holes to get them up there, up the side there. This though is supposed to be a chalkboard, which I don't see it. Um, I like it. I mean, they like to kind of, they try to draw a chalk on it. It doesn't really, really work as a chalkboard, but that was really hard because you have to pull that really, really tight to get it to work. And then obviously I just got it put together. So I still have the fold lines from when it came out of the bag. But again, if there is a weak point on this, there's really not, that might be it. But I wouldn't not buy the set because of that. Now, as far as attaching it into the ground, here are the ground stakes. So they actually give you one, two, uh, three, uh, four of these. So what you do here is basically, again, I, the instructions say to put this on first and then drive it into the ground. 
I didn't do that. So what I did was I actually built the thing in place, made sure it's where it was, and I kind of just, because these, these actually go about a foot in the ground. They're about, they're about this tall. So what I did was I put everything where I built it in place and then took this, laid it up on the side, then used that sledge and just kind of drove it down the wall. And then when I got down to, again, you're about, until that screw was about even with this, that's when I just pre-drilled and then screwed them in, anchored it, did the same thing back there. And then same thing with those. I basically built it in place and then just drove, drove it down. And then when it was, yeah, the screw was about two, three inches off the ground. I drilled in and then I just, I screwed in, anchored it. And now everything here is anchored in place. Make sure you do that because that is so this thing doesn't twit tip when the kids swing. That keeps this whole thing in place. But overall, I do, uh, do think this is a very well-built quality playset. I expect many, many years of play out of it. And um, I do recommend it to anyone who might be considering it. And if you found this review helpful, hit the thumbs up below. That way other people can, uh, other people can see it and you can pass it on. Thanks. Hey, real quick, if you like what you see in this video and you want to purchase one for yourself, I've left links to everything here in the description. And if you want more no-nonsense, no BS product reviews, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the, uh, hit the bell so you don't miss one.